Hello, and welcome to our channel, Space Journey. Today, we are going to talk about interesting news about space that happened this month, but mostly we will talk about SpaceX. So, if you are interested to know what happened this month, stay with us until the end of this video. At the beginning, please support us with subscribing to our channel and liking this video so we can continue researching and making the best content about space for you. We have a lot to cover for this month because so much has happened. Loads of Starship updates to talk about, notably concerning Booster 4 and the test series of Ship 20 in recent days. More intriguing details about SpaceX's proposal to orbit the Moon with the world's first deep space fuel store. We also have information on the Long March 3B rocket, which was reported lost after China launched it twice in less than two hours. So, let's not waste any more time and start the video right away. First, we're going to start off this episode with some significant news about Starship in Starbase. Over the last two days, SpaceX has been quite busy. They're almost done putting Mechazilla together. They completed the Quick Disconnect Extension installation on September 23rd. The pincher has been hoisted into place by SpaceX employees. The rainbow-colored Liebherr 11350 monster Frankencrane was used to raise the item to a height of 65 meters, where it was connected to the fast disconnect arm. The QD arm is an important element of the Mechazilla system, and it will have two functions. Stabilize the stack with the pincher and fuel the Starship upper stage, according to Musk. The only thing the arm looks to be missing currently, apart from some piping and some wiring, is the real fast detach umbilical panel that will allow it to temporarily connect to starships to supply power, propellant, and connection. However, there are several aspects of the building that are still lacking, which I will discuss later. How are Starship 21 and Booster 5 doing now? The successors to SpaceX's current dream duo of B4 and S20 are on the way. Booster 5 is being built within the SpaceX High Bay and it appears to be coming taller by the day. Workers hoisted it into the air after connecting it up to the gantry crane beneath the bay roof. The next orbital spaceship is almost set to launch as well. The TPS, Thermal Protection System, tile installation nose is being worked on by SpaceX. In case you forgot, TPS is the barrier that shielded the space shuttle orbiter from the sweltering 1,650 degrees Celsius or 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit heat of atmospheric re-entry. A second aim was to keep the astronauts safe from the extremes of space heat and cold while in orbit. SpaceX appears to be altering its installation approach. They are now doing it in sections. While the Starship 21 has not yet been stacked, all of the segments have been recognized. Therefore, TPS tiles may be put on all segments prior to stacking. How are Ship 20 and Rocket 4 performing at the launch site while Starship 21 and Booster 5 are rapidly catching up? The orbital launch mount's Booster 4 was recently removed and put next to it on a booster stand. Last but not least, SpaceX has begun the first test campaign for the first orbital Starship prototype. On September 27th, SpaceX conducted the first cryoproof test with Ship 20. Starship S-20 aggressively shattered a dozen or so weak heat shield tiles before the pad had even been emptied of the last few remaining employees. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, soon verified that Starship S-20 had efficiently jettisoned the tiles from its nose during the brief test of high-pressure cold gas maneuvering thrusters, which occurred about the same time that SpaceX began pressurizing the rocket for its initial testing. SpaceX appears to have collected the information and data it need within Monday's 9-hour test session, but on Wednesday it continued testing. And, as you know, they never disclose official information about the test results, and this time is no exception. Let's move on to the next fascinating bit of SpaceX news. The world's first geostationary propellant store will be launched orbiting the moon. As part of a SpaceX Falcon 9 launch that will send a commercial moon lander on its way to Earth's nearest neighbor, rideshare organizer Spaceflight Inc. and propellant depot startup OrbitFab have revealed plans for the first high-Earth orbit propellant depot, known as Tanker 2. 
the co-developed spacecraft will technically be the first repellent depot, essentially a gas station in space, to reach a geostationary orbit approximately 36,000 kilometers or 22,300 miles above the Earth's surface. Based around a variant of Spaceflight's brand new Sherpa OTV space tug vehicles, OrbitFab hasn't disclosed the planned capacity of its unique geodepot, but the public specifications of Sherpa suggest that the company will be able to deliver a few hundred kilograms, 300 to 800 pounds of hydrazine accessible via several tiny docking ports. However, Tanker 2 is an interesting solely for its unique position as a tanker in geo. How Spaceflight and OrbitFab plan to get the small spacecraft into position will be a feat of engineering and trajectory design in its own right. Spaceflight intends to co-manifest Tanker 2 on Intuitive Machine's IM-2 lunar lander, which is scheduled to launch no earlier than late 2022 or early 2023 on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Spaceflight's Sherpa ES tug and Tanker 2 will first piggyback into orbit on the IM-2 lander, but will quickly part ways around four hours after liftoff. Sherpa ES will execute a short burn instead of preparing to enter orbit around the moon, altering its course to a lunar flyby and gravity assist maneuver. That slingshot around the moon will allow Sherpa ES and Tanker 2 to enter a circular geostationary orbit considerably more efficiently and just a few weeks after launch, according to a first-of-its-kind trajectory devised by company GeoJump. Meanwhile, the IM-2 lander will most likely enter lunar orbit and begin a slow fall towards the surface until it is ready to land, maybe around the same time as Tanker 2 enters Geo. And now, we come to the last bit of news for today's episode, the Chinese spacecraft that went missing after a normal flight. Despite a safe liftoff on Monday, China has announced the loss of its Xi'an-10 satellite, September 27th. A Long March 3B rocket launched the Xi'an-10 satellite into orbit around 4.20 a.m. on Monday from the Xijiang Satellite Launch Center in southwest China, September 27th. The spacecraft was China's second orbital launch of the day after the Jinlin-1 Gaofen 02D satellite, which was launched from Jiquan Satellite Launch Center in northwest China at 2.19 a.m. with a Kuizu 1A rocket. The spacecraft is said to have successfully reached orbit. The Chinese state media released a statement on Tuesday confirming the Xi'an-10 satellite failure, claiming the spacecraft was not functioning as expected and had been lost after a normal flight the day before. Shortly after liftoff on Monday, a flash in the night sky was seen over New South Wales, Australia, and reported on Twitter. That flash was likely caused by a burn of the upper stage of the Long March 3B rocket, which, at the time, suggested the launch was on course. The name and purpose of Long March 3B's payload had not been confirmed prior to launch. However, Data from the U.S. Space Force showed the payload was targeting a geosynchronous orbit around Earth. A few hours after launch, an object was catalogued confirming that the Xi'an-10 satellite had successfully separated from the rocket's upper stage. While the Long March 3B launch vehicle was confirmed to have performed normally, the Xi'an-10 satellite experienced abnormal operating conditions during launch and was declared a failure on Tuesday. On Monday, China's Kaizu 1A rocket took to the skies for the first time since it failed to put the Jilin 1 Gaofen 02C satellite into orbit in September 2020. The Jilin 1 Gaofen 02D satellite was successfully launched into orbit by the rocket. Jilin 1 Gaofen 02D is a high resolution Earth observation satellite that is part of the Jilin 1 constellation of 138 high performance optical remote sensing satellites that China plans to launch. China's 35th and 36th orbital launches of 2021 took place on Monday. The China Aerospace Science and Technology Corp, CASC, was responsible for the launches, which are part of a year-long plan to launch more than 40 missions. Now, I'm not one for conspiracies, but it all seems like one to me. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And that's all the information we have for you today. We'd also like to take the time to thank you for supporting our channel, Space Journey. It really means a lot to us. 
Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to support us by subscribing and liking this video. We will do our best to make more videos for you with fascinating and interesting happenings in our universe. But for now, that's it. See you soon.